Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. I didn't think you would read everything that I wrote you because that's half of my HPL speech. <laughs> the High Performance Leadership Project is one project from the leadership track. There are three modules in the leadership track beginning with competent leader, advanced leader bronze, and then advanced leader silver. The High Performance Leadership Project is from the advanced leader silver, the final one. And it is a, a project that you pick ideally outside of Toastmasters, real world. Some people pick projects work related, stuff they're doing anyways. You are to select a committee of up to five people. Remembering that the more people you select, the harder it is to get everyone together. The manual, if you've seen it, is a complete manual. This is for one HPL high performance leadership project. It begins by giving you some background into what leadership is about, to assess the qualities. I think there's six qualities of a leader, and to put yourself down after assessing your background and skills, assessing yourself at where you wind up as a, as a leader. By the time you finish the project, you will redo that and to see if you have strengthened in any of those six areas, and you should have. The project can typically take anywhere from several months to several years, uh, as long as you want to make it. Ideally, probably one to two years, I, I, I think personally. And it's nice to take it outside of the club because the true leadership skills that a person learns within Toastmasters won't do you any good if you can't apply it out in the real world. Whether it's your family, whether it's your church, whether it's your social uh, network, whether it's your work, and uh, perhaps your self-employment uh, role. It's funny how this all started because it started a long time ago, growing up in West Central Manitoba, in a town of 400 people where the, the, the season could encompass five months of winter, you begin to rely on AM radio, which is what we had, connected to a station 60 miles away. And in a bleak of winter, it was quite something to listen to, to the radio, even though there wasn't really that much interesting on it. Remember, this is AM in the early 70s and 80s. But the wireless aspect intrigued me, much like Andre. I'm still intrigued by wireless radio. CB radios came in, and that was a flurry in our town for about 15 avid, avid talkers. And then, of course, in modern day, the wireless with the internet, wireless devices like wireless laptops, wireless uh, Apple products, that too continues. When I was area governor last year, one of the requirements as an area governor is to visit each of the five clubs in our area at least twice a year. And when you do, you're supposed to give some sort of educational uh, speech, sometimes uh, lecture. And when it's done, it would come back with me home and I would put it up in my Toastmaster shelf. And I looked at it one day and I thought, gee, now it's sitting there parked. I, I spent a couple nights writing it. I spent a couple times practicing it. I delivered it once, maybe twice, and now it's parked on the shelf, it will never be used again. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I could just put it out somewhere in some medium one more time where it can sit and collect dust, but still have the potential for somebody to listen to it. And having this interest in radio that I've never had a chance to explore, I thought, why not tie it into a podcast? So last year in January of 2009, I started my TDK Talks TM podcast, which is geared to Toastmasters from new to two to three years of membership, newer members, and strictly educational, running roughly 15 minutes in length. But that encompassed a lot of extra, extraneous work that I didn't originally contemplate. It was the design of the website. It was the design of the blog site, which runs in parallel with it. There's the subscription service that I had to hook up to with iTunes and uh, Microsoft's equivalent, Zoom, and also you can listen to it right off the podcast site off your PC. If you're not sure about something about the Advanced Leader Program to save time, you can come and see me after and I can tell you a little bit more of what I know 
about it. So, so far, as Irma has said, I have done 16 shows, they're roughly about 15 minutes each. I've interviewed the international president last year in Saskatoon for about uh, 15 minutes. Uh, I was a little nervous because that was, that was my first big interview. After rehearsing and flying down there and uh, having only two hours, and uh, then it dawned on me about five minutes through our interview, she kept calling me Larry. <laughs> and I thought, my goodness, I've prepared everything, and you couldn't imagine what can go wrong. And I said to myself, well, I didn't quite brief her on my name. Of course, I didn't want to embarrass her, and I, and I kind of rolled it into the theme of Daryl, Larry, Daryl, and Daryl from Newhart, coming from a family of three boys. <laughs> I've also interviewed on my last show, number 16, Miss Diana Boer, who had an article in the February issue of our Toastmaster magazine. I interviewed her for about 10 minutes over Skype, and that went, that went quite well. And Diana, of course, has been doing public speaking, mentoring, and coaching, tutoring for about 30 years, and she's still quite at it, so it was interesting to talk to her. But I never, ever realized that I would learn as much as I have been by doing these podcasts because you would not believe how some people change as soon as a microphone comes up. Now these are strictly audio podcasts, so you can do whatever you want in gestures, it's strictly audio, but still it does scare some people. And in Saskatoon I was rather amazed when I approached one of the nine contestant speakers. The person competed I don't know how many times at that level. There were nine competitors, I got each one of the nine to give me one or so minutes, one minute of just, after they're done of course, of how they felt they did, just last minute uh, feelings, how they did, their vibes, anything. And uh, this person just clowned right up, I couldn't believe it. So I thought, uh, along with my podcast, it's a chance for me to instill in the people that I'm going to interview, instill in them confidence and honesty that Whatever they say, if they do blurb and say something they shouldn't have, they have to trust me that I'm going to cut it out because I'm certainly not there to embarrass anyone. This is geared to be educational for not only Toastmasters, but uh, people outside of Toastmasters who may have heard about us and uh, want to know more about us. So I've given, uh, in those 16 shows, I've given some uh, topics uh, of interest. I've talked about uh, various club roles. I've talked about uh, using a free toast host, a web template for a club website, and also about being the various uh, various club executive uh, roles, what it's about to try and entice people to consider it. My uh, format for the show, of course, was to pick one article from each one's Toastmaster magazine, one article, and talk about it a bit in the uh, podcast show to uh, give at least one show tip which would be something for Toastmaster to use during a meeting. And there's always things coming up. Uh, you know yourselves, as soon as you come up here to speak in your preparation, something comes up and you'd like to talk about it, will you just add a little more to it and it becomes an educational thing. So in a way, I think this is sort of my way of trying to give back. It also leads me into another realm, which is kind of nice to do, is mentoring and coaching new members because uh, uh, I do learn uh, quite a bit from mentoring and learning from somebody new. The problem with being in something for too long, no matter what it is, is you get complacent, you get biased, and you start developing these. And if you hook up uh, with a new member that's just starting to speak, uh, that they're probably quite good speakers, you can probably learn something from them, and you always do, some new uh, techniques, some new styles, and gives you further ideas. So it's my way to try and, and give something back. I'm currently working on a new website, which is taking, again, an enormous amount of time. But um, I hope it goes for another year at least. I've got a couple of interesting topics. I'm now thinking about using guest co-hosts in order to lessen myself from all the talking and hopefully not generating too much monotony for all the listeners, hopefully some of which are yourself. So that is my High Performance Leadership Project. The whole project uh, entails giving this introductory speech, uh, doing some committee work on rounding up my project, and towards the end, giving another final wrap-up speech 
uh, probably for another seven to nine minutes uh, to hopefully all of you, which will probably take uh, probably in the next six months or so. So I hope you listen to it. I have my Postmaster Biz card here with the website on it. If you want to take a shot and look at it, give me some feedback. That's always welcome. That is my high performance leadership project. Thank you.